I believe that Terrarians often speedrun the game to Moonlord and never take their time on their worlds. I want to change that. So over the course of a year, I have played on this one world, with each stage of progression being blocked until the start of a new month. I did this so I could seriously take my time in each stage of Terraria's progression and see what it had to offer. So for the month of December, I am finally allowed to defeat the Lunatic Cultist and Moon Lord, and make the final form of progression. This is what happened. The beginning of the month and I am so excited and yet so sad. There's some cool things to do and collect, but it's also the final month on this world I love. I don't want this to end, but I guess I should get right to it and not waste a single second. Last month I killed the Empress of Light 30 times and didn't get the Stellar Tune guitar and I desperately want to use that weapon since I've never been able to use it before. I don't even know if I've ever used the guitar, like not even in one of those everything worlds just to test it out. I really want this thing, so before getting to the cultist, I'm returning to the Empress. I still have two lace wings left over from last month, and I was so eager to get into the fight that I forgot to grab potions, and the battle ended up being long, and I lost. Ah! <laughs> no! I can't be wasting lace wings like this. I don't want to have to keep going through the farming process, gosh darn it. I started sleeping to the next night, but the goblins stopped by, and although they are no threat to me, they are a threat to my NPCs. No, not Domino the bunny! You killed Domino the bunny! You're going to die now. So I killed them all with prejudice and returned to farming for lace wings. Last month I learned that summoning a blood moon can increase their spawn rates and I got up to 7 lace wings in a night or something like that. I also put down a water candle although I didn't end up being around it as much as I'd have liked. Thing is though, despite this being a great strategy last month, I only ended up with 3 lace wings this night. And I can get that on a regular night. It's as if the spawn rates suddenly dropped. I also learned from several of you last month that I can turn on and off the guide to critical companionship and that's a really handy tip. That didn't stop me from wasting one of my lace wings though. I killed her the first time and then failed on the second fight. I'm really doing quite poorly against Empress today. The treasure bag from the first one also didn't give me the stellar tune, which is the name of the guitar I've been after this whole time, in case I haven't said that already. The next night, the Blood Moon got me five lace wings, which still isn't great for a Blood Moon, but I suppose it's fine. And usually I can only be Empress twice a night after having farmed for the first half of that night. And it remained true here. Only thing is, I managed to kill Empress two times, but died at the end of both of those fights. So. Two times in a row, we killed each other, and I am just doing so bad this week, but at least I guess I am killing Empress and can open the treasure bags that still don't have a stellar tune. Heart heavy, I added another relic to the collection. I have enough lace wings at this point to not need to farm them again, so I head straight into battle. Taking her down once, I got nothing, and on the second attempt, I was starting to reach a point where I was losing it. Alright, and get up! <laughs> <laughs> I killed her again and opened yet another empty bag. No! 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 I am desperate at this point for literally anything. I've been grinding out Empress for far too long at this point, and I want to be getting to Moonlord. All I can think of, though, is making some luck potions. Pink pearls are stupidly rare, and there's nothing else that's useful from desert fishing, so I've hardly done any of it at all, so I figured I'd just stick with regular luck potions. Only thing is that I need ladybugs, and I never collected ladybugs, so I was afraid I couldn't make the potions, but then, as I was about to put the black pearls away, some ladybugs were flying towards the house, and that's just so very convenient. I'm not a believer in the luck system in Terraria at all, but gosh darn it, I don't care anymore. I'm that desperate. I had to search for lace wings again and only got four. The spawns of these things are just terrible this week, and worse yet, I forgot once again to turn off the guide to creator companionship and lost one of those four. I still have three and this time I drank a luck potion to hopefully increase the odds of getting a stellar tune, but once again I was left with nothing. I have now killed Empress of Light 39 times. My heart is genuinely broken. 
I've become numb to fighting her. And whenever I open a bag, I don't even expect to see a guitar. I'm just going through the motions, abandoning hope. I head off to the dungeon and kill the lunatic poultice with ease. The fight was actually remarkably easy, really. I guess he's not exactly the hardest boss, but the night glow is also great against him. The most notable thing about the fight, though, was what happened when I beat him. Oh, we got the dragon on the... All right. <laughs> All right, game. Sure. Give me the dragon first try. That's what you call the game mocking me. It knows. It knows all. And it's teasing me. <laughs> I figured I'd still farm Empress if it turned to night. But I can't sleep anymore while the pillars are around. So I might as well take some down. And the first one I should be is the Nebula Pillar, of course. Because I would quite like some new mage weapons. Thing is, the Nebula Pillar is one of the, if not the hardest pillar in my opinion. There was one point where I was going in circles and was actually avoiding all the enemies quite well, so maybe circles is the strat. It also spawned in a weird place, being on top of two living trees that also happened to have been hit by a meteor. What are the odds of something like that? I crafted the mage weapons, went to the Goblin Tinkerer to reforge, and the very first reforge on the Nebula Blaze was mythical. I'm getting lucky on everything. Everything. Except... Yep, see? Everything except the stellar to I am this game this game the game knows it's mocking me I'm telling you it is mocking me chat was also saying I missed a nebula fragment But I didn't believe them so I checked and they were right gosh darn it It turned to night, but at this point I had run out of bloody tears So I drank a battle potion and had to rely on that to farm lace wings and only ended up with two the Nebula Blaze was actually way better than I thought it would be. I know it's good, but for the longest time, I didn't think this was a strong weapon at all. And that was a long held belief that leads me to constantly underestimating its power. That power didn't save me during the second fight though, when I did a dumb and died. I guess I might as well take down more pillars. It doesn't really matter which ones I target either, so I headed to the solar pillar since it's one of the easiest pillars, but I'm not sure if I think it or Stardust is the easiest. One of the two. For solar, you basically just have to stay on the ground and then jump around strategically to avoid the few enemies on the ground. The Night Glow is also just great against all of the pillars and was perhaps even more efficient against solar in particular. The Vortex Pillar gave me some problems, and it often does. Vortex is the only pillar that can be reliably cheesed, though I always forget how and don't particularly like cheesing, but the Shotgun Alien Boyos are so hard to dodge. The Alien Queens are never a big deal for me, and it's just these Shotgun Jetpack guys who keep pace with wherever I am, and you have to dodge around them at the last second. It's just a mess. But I took it down and switched out the Betsy Bow with the Vortex Beater, but first I need to reforge it. I hate this game! I hate this game so much! Screw you, Goblin You can't just give me the best reforge first try two times! You can't just do that and not give me the stellar tune! You gosh darn! I swear! Terraria is a sentient being. How am I getting the best of luck in literally everything except for Empress? Whether it be the Lacewing spawns or the Stellar Tune drop, I've been lucky with everything except that. The game must have been trying to throw me off because the next Lacewing farming session reaped five lace wings while using a battle potion and a luck potions so maybe luck potions are something i should use more often while farming i killed two more empresses no stellar tune i spawned in another lace wing and you can't tell me that this didn't hit it that clearly hit the lace wing this game so helped me i killed two more empresses that night and still no stellar tune <laughs> Uh, 
heart broken, I go to kill the Stardust Pillar. At this point, I just want to kill Moon Lord so I can get the bottomless shimmer bucket and finish the build below the houses the Stardust Pillar happened to spawn on. I actually love this though, it's so cool having the pillar here. It'd be even better if the pillar was in between the two houses, but this is just neat. I took down the pillar and here comes Moon Lord. I brought potions and everything and was ready to head into the end game. I watched and followed Moon Lord. I sang a battle cry. Ouch. I was getting hit way more times than I thought I would be. I've been doing great against Moon Lord recently, so when I got hit by the Moon Laser and died, I was honestly in shock. It hadn't even occurred to me that I might lose. I really did think I'd just beat him. First try, no problem. Hmm. Thankfully, I could craft a Celestial Sigil and summon him a second time. I was just as confident, but once again, I lost. I can't express just how crestfallen I was. After so many failures with Empress, I was hoping to lift my spirits by adding the shimmer to the crystal cave I had built, but now I've lost twice. And I'm out of time for the week. Or at least, I don't have enough time to beat the cultists and pillars again. I did have time to farm for more lace wings. I got three more and maybe, just maybe, I can get the stellar tune. In reality, I've hardly even accomplished anything this week. I've just been doing grinding that has led nowhere and failed the end game fight. <laughs> the stellar tune could give this week a purpose, an accomplishment, so I killed her three more times. I opened two of the bags and got nothing and saved the final one. Before opening it, I checked and saw I had now killed her 47 times. Oh, please, let this bag have the stellar tune. Here it is. Mmm, the last bag. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> Before starting week 2, if you have enjoyed the content, be sure to subscribe as it really means a lot and I'll be blowing up the world for every subscriber I have as of the end of 2023. And I'll be streaming the dynamite tossing very soon. Now with week 2, I have the same objectives as last week pretty much. Get the Stellar Tune, defeat Moonlord, and add Shimmer to the empty Aether Basin I built last month. Maybe this time the drop rates will be on my side and I can finally get my grimy little hands on the Stellar Tune and not totally fail the Moon Lord boss battle. To hopefully improve my odds, I mine some more Chlorophyte with which I can make Chlorophyte bullets. These homing bullets combined with a Vortex repeater is one of the best free Moon Lord combinations in my opinion, so it should definitely help. But before getting to the pillars and Moon Lord, I figured it was close enough to night to sleep the rest of it away to evening where I could collect more lace wings. 44 dead empresses have been left in my wake, but apparently, more of them are in my future. And since I don't have bloody tears any longer, I'm stuck with relying on battle potions and a water candle to increase spawn rates, but this night, I only managed to catch my average of two, but I'm feeling good that this first one will finally drop the Stellar Tune. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> no! But I got one more! And all it did was further send me down the pits of despair, as I have now killed 48 empresses and have yet to receive a stellar tune. Without another lacewing to my name, I figured I'd head on over to the dungeon and kill the lunatic cultists and start the process of taking down the pillars once more. Thing is though, I actually messed up the fake cultist clone thing a lot more doing this fight than the last one and came really close to dying. I still won, but I'm afraid today might be a day laced with skill issue. While fighting the solar pillar, I actually accidentally found a cheesing strategy. Huh. Why didn't I think of this before? If I just perch myself up on a solid block high in the air, then the worms won't attack since I am on the ground and the other enemies have a hard time getting up here. This is, well, a lot more effective than I thought it would be. I collected the fragments and chat said I missed one, but I totally didn't. The Nebula Pillar doesn't really have good cheese, so I figured I'd just brute force it, which resulted in a quick death, but what's really important is to clothe the air. 
Oh, go Clothier, you got- uh, Yeah, Edmund! Go Edmund- Oh, <laughs> I hope Edmund lives. I believe in you, Edmund! Thing is, too, that I ended up dying a second time, and when I returned, Edmund was just chillin'. Either he killed the evolution beast in his house or else it despawned, but either way, the NPC has survived while I have died twice. Way to go, Edmund! Edmund rocks! Nebula went down, and I nearly cleared Vortex, but it's prime lace wing hunting time, so I headed over to the Hollow. And by prime time, I mean I already wasted half of the time they can spawn in, and despite searching, I didn't find a single one. So I finished out the Vortex Pillar, and then cleared the Stardust Pillar, summoning Moonlord for the third time on this world. I took this fight a little more seriously than I did the first two, but I was way out of rhythm with the boss and ended up running out of flight time right as the laser came, and that ended the third fight. I'm genuinely frustrated with myself. I've been doing good against Moonlord lately, or at least I think I have. I'm so well prepared that I was certain I'd win the first one, but now I've lost three. On the bright side though, I have a bunch of pillar fragments I can use to make sigils to summon him back in without fighting the cultist and pillars again. I summoned Moonlord and although I've been using mage for the last few fights, I thought that this time I'd stick more with the melee build. The low defense of the mage simply made it too hard for me to survive as I'm not good enough with Moonlord to dodge him often enough with that build, so the higher defense of melee kept me alive much better until I opened the core, at which point I ran away using the hex branch and shot at the Moonlord with the vortex beater and chlorophyte bullets. Usually when the core is open, the fight is basically over, but I still came close to dying, but not quite close enough. There we go! There we go! Moonlord down in one year, one world! What a beautiful sight to see. It's done! We did it! Alright guys, bye forever, this is it. <laughs> Moonlord is down, and now we can get to work with endgame content, and that's so much fun! I spend so little time with this stuff, so let's see what one can do in the endgame. The boss bag gives me the Terrarian and the Last Prism, which is fantastic, but I also love the Celestial Starboard, and I gave it to my melee build. And before I continue, I have to place the Moonlord Relic in the trophy room, and at last, the collection is complete. I grab my bottomless water bucket, excited to shimmer it into the bottomless shimmer bucket, but when I made Luminite bars, I saw the bucket as something I could craft by combining the bars with the bucket that I had on hand, and that shocked me. I was certain you shimmered for the bucket, not crafted it, that's weird, so I crafted it, but afterwards I needed to satisfy the weird feeling in my gut that you should shimmer this thing, so I tried throwing in the bottomless shimmer bucket into the shimmer and out came the bottomless water bucket. But no luminite. Wait, what happened to my luminite? I threw the bucket back in and it turned into the shimmer bucket again. Wait, that means you can shimmer the thing but you can also craft it. And if you craft it, you can never get the bars back. What is this? Why? Why have the crafting recipe? Why not give me the bars? What is this? That's dumb, but at last I got the bucket and started filling in the empty basin I had. But then I noticed it was the time of day that Lacewing spawned, so I stopped before finishing, and the credits must have blessed me with good spawn rates because I got four Lacewings, and I never get that many without a Blood Moon. Summoning her, I whipped out the last prism because that's going to be fun. Let's do this! Rainbow v rainbow, you ain't got nothing. Ain't got nothing on me. My rainbow's too strong. I always knew this thing was strong, but even while chugging mana potions and getting mana sickness debuff, this thing destroys Empress. But not well enough for me to not do a dumb and lose. I can't be wasting lace swings like this. I fought her again and took her down for the 49th time. Very good, Stellar tuned me. Gosh darn it! All right. You... You're... <laughs> I have wasted like, what, 10 lace wings at this point? Oh, the pain I feel when those things fly away and disappear. Oh, uh, I took down number 50 and still, no, stellar tune. I'm going to cry. <laughs> this is this is this is abuse, is what this is. I was going to use the pylons to get to the artificial aether I, I needed to finish, but the goblins came and stopped me from using them. T goblins, I don't have time for you. I'm in the middle of some emotional 
Bitch. Figuring they wouldn't be a problem, I poured Shimmer into the build. Turns out, the Goblin Warlock would be a problem. So I guess I really should kill off the goblins, and then I got busy reforging the Moonlord weapons I just acquired. Now I just have to fight the cultist again, because although I can summon Moonlord more, I need more fragments to make the endgame armors. When I took him down, he dropped another dragon pet, which means I've gotten two out of the three times that I've killed him, and that's stupidly lucky. Why of all things do I have to be lucky with this? Give me the stellar tomb! <laughs> The Nebula Pillar spawned in the same place, but tragedy struck when Edmund unfortunately perished. Oh, Edmund! In a blind rage, I destroyed the Nebula Pillar, took a tombstone, and in honor of Edmund, I wrote a short eulogy for him on which I wrote the wrong name because I misremembered it at the time and, well, um, I have this unfortunate soundbite. We respect Edward too much to misspell his name. I am so upset with myself right now. <laughs> but I finished the artificial aether and I think it looks awesome. So happy with how that turned out. For the other pillars, I spam the last prism until everything died. And this thing really tears apart the pillars in no time flat. I also wanted to mention that I absolutely love that the pillars only require you to kill half as many enemies after beating Moonlord. It's so very nice, and it's just one of those quality of life things added in 144 that I appreciate so much and yet hardly ever engage with because I rarely farm the pillars after beating Moonlord. Usually it's over at this point. I farm for late swings, but over the course of an entire night with a battle potion and water candle, I didn't get a single lace swing, and that is very upsetting. <laughs> I took down the final pillars and then beat Moonlord for the second time while using the Terrarian and this yo-yo really is a great weapon against Moonlord. I don't even have any yo-yo accessories and it's great. I wonder what it'd be like if I did have the yo-yo accessory. I was going to use the last prism but I forgot my mage potion so before fighting him again I grabbed those and the last prism is actually broken. My goodness this thing shreds everything it's better than the zenith <laughs> my goodness but i'm still a glass cannon and after misreading the timing with the top laser eye i was absolutely destroyed myself but i had beaten him again and i figured that would be enough for full nebula but it actually wasn't if i hadn't lost 10 bars to the shimmer bucket i probably could have crafted the full set but oh well i beat moonlord a third time while focusing on just using the last prism it does shred Moonlord like it has no business to, but I am a glass cannon and could die if any rogue laser decides to hit me. This whole run has convinced me that Mage is easily the best when it comes to DPS, but it's also the weakest for enemies to kill, which begs the question, what does Summoner got going for them? <laughs> Actually, how do you beat Moonlord as Summoner? <laughs> You'd have to be much closer than I am as Mage or else they won't be close enough to attack. Dang, Summoner's got it rough. To illustrate my point with Mage though, I was about to take Moonlord down a fourth time and was having a good time on my starboard when two separate lasers did a quick one-two and killed me just before he died. Oh! Dang, damn it! <laughs> I was still at least able to make full Nebula armor, though I still think sometimes that the Spectre armor is better. It came time to retire the Night Glow, and so I hung it up since it may very well be my new favorite weapon, and I put the Spectre armor on a mannequin. Another night came and I half-heartedly grabbed two more Lace Wings. Determined to finally get the Stellar Tune, I took her down 50 first time and opened the treasure bag. There's only so many of uh, I can- <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> I got it! I got it! I actually got it! <laughs> I got it! Yes! Number! Number 49! <laughs> it's so beautiful! It's so beautiful! <laughs> Tears in my eyes, I figured I might as well beat Empress once more, just to bring my total up to 52, while also testing out my new instrument. It's not as powerful as the last prism, but that's fine. It's still strong, and it's still so beautiful. 
Words cannot express the joy I felt in this moment. The seller tune wasn't able to beat her fast enough before a date rolled around, um, so I had to whip out the last prism to finish her off for the 52nd time. I need a real life stellar tune right now. I, I This weapon means way more to me than it has any right to. I killed Moonlord again, crafted full solar armor, and hung up the beetle armor at home. And now, it's finally time to shimmer the Rod of Discord and Clan Taminator for the first time in any world of mine. I've used the Rod of Dissonance before while hosting servers and whatnot, but never in a regular world. And I have never even seen the Terraformer before now. Turns out there are now several new solutions that can turn biomes into desert, forest, and snow? Now I'm sure there's even another one or two that I never knew existed, but I haven't even heard of these ones. I'm going to have to play with them, but I'm just about out of time for this week, so I finished up my time shimmering all the NPCs since I've never seen many of their variants. I really like the party girl and wizard, the witch doctor is awesome, and the dryad is now a variant I've seen on the title screen when opening the game and for the longest time I was wondering where this texture came from and now I know. The truffle turns red and the clothier is really neat looking. I also found Edmund's hat while shimmering the clothier and I hung it up out of respect for our fallen comrade. The guy's variant is odd to me. I like the die trader and painter. The golfer has me really confused because... What? Why are you an animal? Wait, what? Guys? Huh? The merchant is awesome, and now I actually remember having seen that one before. I love it. The princess looks like she's turned into a witch or a goth girl or something. The nurse and the arms dealer are pretty cool, but far and away, my favorite is the pirate captain who turns into a ghost. This is awesome. But that wraps up my time with this week. And we got the stellar tune! We got the stellar tune! <laughs> Let me play a little song. I got the stellar tune. It's so cool. It's a stellar tune. Secret tunnel! Secret tunnel! Through the mountain! Secret, 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 secret tunnel! Yeah. Week three, and I'm wondering what to do. It just occurred to me, I got just about everything I wanted done. Also, I was messing around a little bit, and this, um, this is just, uh, I'm getting way too much enjoyment out of this. This is, um, <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm liking this. this is, I'm, I'm having a good time right now. I'm having a very good time. <laughs> there are still a few things I need, though. I need to farm Moonlord a bit more for the sake of getting the Zenith and Celebration. And also, it just turned to Christmas. And so now I can get the Snow Globe, take down the Frost Legion, and get Santa Claus to spawn. I also learned the Stellar Tune shoots where my cursor is. I thought it just shot in a direction I was facing, but apparently it follows the cursor. I summoned a Moonlord, and I just loved using the last prism against him, and that was going great until it suddenly stopped working. Oh, my auto! <gasps> I'm out of mana potions! Oops! <laughs> And this is why having a melee and ranger build to back myself up is super nice, and I took him down using the Terrarian Yo-Yo. I got the Star Wrath, which is great, but I still need to kill him some more, so I summoned him again and was close to winning, but also a little low on health. We will be fine. Just... <laughs> Gosh darn it! Even though I died, I still had all the swords I needed to craft the Zenith, and I was grabbing them all when I realized the only enchanted sword I had was the one I put in this frame all the way back in February, I believe. I almost didn't want to take it down, but I did, and then went to reforge the Zenith to Legendary. Alright, let's get this th God, I had it the second I had it on the second No, you- You're- I got it! With the Zenith in hand, I thought it'd be nice to farm for presents. Drinking a battle potion and a luck potion, I went to the underground desert and hollow biome. Maybe I'll get a dungeon key while I'm at it, but considering my luck when it comes to those things, I think I'm just going to focus on getting the snow globe. I also made sure to use the stellar tune. I farmed too hard to not use it a bit, and I was delightfully surprised with how well it performs underground. It can go through blocks to a certain extent and is really good at finding enemies to kill, so to speak. 
It didn't take long to get the snow globe, and I kept gathering presents until the potions ran out and returned home. I opened the presents and figured I'd sell some of the things I didn't really care about, but while I did this, I accidentally sold the snow globe. I didn't realize for quite a while until someone from chat asked why I had sold it. Why did you sell the snow? Wait! No. Wait, did I, did I actually do that? No! No! I did! Oh, <laughs> oh no! And so, I returned to farming for another snow globe, and thankfully it didn't take too long, so after getting it, I summoned the Frost Legion right away. Would have been cool if I could have fought this event earlier in progression, but I guess this will just have to do. I suppose there isn't exactly anything I can get from it in anyways, but then I actually started fighting the snowmen and they were really close to killing me. Why is the Frost Legion so dangerous? Oh no! Heal, heal, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die to the Frost Legion. I am genuinely shocked at how close I was to dying. They really could have done it if I hadn't started taking the fight more seriously and my channel would never recover. <laughs> <laughs> if I had died to these snowmen post moon lord <laughs> Santa Claus showed up soon after but he spawned in at a weird place Why did he spawn in the de Why is he in the desert? So I told him to move to the igloo and then check to see what he sold just in case there was something particularly interesting I'd forgotten about but it's basically just Christmas tree stuff and in the spirit of Christmas, I bought the decorations I needed and set it up next to the igloo. Boom, the most festive Throrben Christmas tree you've ever seen in your entire life. At this point, I suddenly remembered I actually checked the wiki. I know, it's really not like me to do something like that, but I wanted to see if there was shimmer items I'd never heard of, and sure enough, there was one. If you throw the star cloak into the shimmer, it turns into the chromatic cloak and this allows you to jump into the shimmer without phasing through the blocks. This is so cool! I had no idea there was something like this in the game. How have I never heard of this? Oh, and I still haven't fixed the meteor build. I made vortex armor with my remaining luminite, but I wanted to make maybe a few pillar tools and I also need to beat Moonlord more for the celebration. This means I need to take down the cultists and the pillars again, and while I did that, I also checked my achievements and noticed I need three more achievements to unlock all of them, so I'll have to do that as well. When I killed the cultist, I got the Master Mode Dragon Pet for the third time, which means I've gotten it three out of the four times I've fought this guy, and that's ridiculous. <laughs> now, one achievement I needed was flying the quadcopter into space, and the cyborg sells that thing. Problem is, the Stardust Pillar is over the house the cyborg lives in. I managed to purchase the stuff before he died and then spent a long while trying to figure out how to fly the thing while simultaneously being attacked by pillar enemies. Eventually, I took down the pillar and flew the quadcopter into outer space, checking off one of the three remaining achievements I had remaining. I quickly cleared the other pillars and as Moonlord was spawning in, I was curious as to whether the Zenith or Last Prism worked better against him, and after fighting with the Zenith for the first time, I think I'd conclude the Zenith is definitely better. The Last Prism is a great rival, but it requires more accuracy and potions if it hopes to match the Zenith. Maybe there's some way to perfectly optimize it to make the Prism better than the Zenith, but if you just want to mindlessly kill Moonlord, the Zenith is the way to go especially since I have actual defense with the melee build while Mage dies in two shots. I made a Vortex ham axe because it looks cool and then jumped into the ocean, waited until I was drowning and drank some water, giving me another achievement, leaving one last one. And that was purifying the entire world. And that's a daunting task. Even after having separated the biomes properly to prevent spread, this Oh boy. <laughs> so instead, I focused on other tasks like getting the celebration. I used a celestial sigil and impending doom approaches. Hello, impending doom. I'm dad. <laughs> I took him down, but didn't get the celebration. I did, however, collect a bit more illuminate, and it occurred to me that it would be nice to have the drill containment unit for purifying the world. But I also need shroomite, specter, and chlorophyte bars. And all those bars require chlorophyte. And I got next to none of that. So I spent quite a bit of time mining nearly 700 chlorophyte ore, bought a magic tome and shimmered it into the advanced battle techniques, which has nothing to do with what I was just doing, but I remembered I needed that. 
I gathered more glowing mushrooms and ectoplasm and crafted what might just be the most expensive item in the game, the drill containment unit. With this in hand, I went to begin the purification process, but then stopped to make the biome site potions and return to purifying. The only good way to go about doing this is mining a bunch of evenly spaced holes in the world and then spraying up and down them. It's not exactly riveting stuff, but I did get to play with the terraformer that turns blocks into desert or tundra and I just love how it works, but we'll get to my journey of purification next week. It's time to go up and down, up and down and up and guess what? down as I carved massive tunnels in the crimson in preparation to purify all of it, and it took quite a while despite preventing the spread of the biome in the first place. I also ran into a crimson heart along the way and the brain spawned in, but I didn't pay a lick of attention to him and he died before I even realized it. While doing this, I learned that mining up these tunnels is much better than mining downwards. When mining up, maybe sand or silt will fall on me, but when mining down, no matter what I do, I am going to hit water at some point and then get stuck mining at like a quarter of the speed. So if you got to do this, mine straight up and never straight down. And let me know if you have any suggestions for making this process easier. With the holes mined, it's time to get purifying. This is all pretty straightforward, but along the way, I actually spotted an enchanted sword. Turns out I had actually mined straight through a shrine without even noticing, and the sword has just been sitting here waiting for me to retrieve it. I spent forever trying to get one of these back in February and was convinced there was only one on the entire world, but now I got another, which I guess can take the place of the enchanted sword I used to craft a zenith. I carefully went down every tunnel while using the terraformer and felt pretty good about getting all of it. Moment of truth, I went to the triad and checked for status. It's always 1% every time! You know it's going to be at least what? Wait, 14% crimson! Oh, wait a minute! 14%! It's 1% corruption! I was then informed that she doesn't always update status until leaving and rejoining the world, so I quickly did that and checked status again with high hopes. It's still 1%! Gosh darn it! And so began the desperate hunt for the 1%. I found several patches of crimson and felt good, so I checked again but still no luck. Remembering that I got a new NPC, I shimmered Santa Claus to see how the variant looks, and I quite enjoy it. The traveling merchant just so happened to be around at the same time, and I shimmered him as well. He looked real cool, and part of me was wondering if he'd stick around after shimmering him, but he doesn't, and now I'm curious if when he shows up next, he'll be his shimmered variant, but that didn't happen before the month ended. I cleared the crimson thorns on the surface, since apparently they count toward crimson spread, but that still wasn't enough. Unsure as to where the crimson could possibly be, I turned my attention to purifying the hollow. Perhaps giving the crimson some time to spread will make it easier to find later. And so I redid the whole process of mining up and down and up again, and then repeating this process with the terraformer. Unfortunately though, this meant I needed to purify my hollow build, which is sad, but it had to be done for the sake of saving the world. I felt quite a bit more confident about this one, so I left and rejoined and the dryad said there's still 1% left. That's frustrating, so I figured I'd kill Moonlord again until I got the celebration. I thought this might turn into a short grinding session, but he dropped the rocket launcher after the first kill, and it had the Unreal modifier. Well, okay then. <laughs> Guess the world really wants me to focus on purifying, so I returned to my search again and again and again, and I slowly checked every block. I even used the ranger accessory that lets me move my point of view, allowing me to look further. And no matter what I did, I could never bring that 1% down to zero. And because I only have so much time each week, in order to ensure each week is given the same amount of time, I ran out of it before I was able to find that last 1%. And that sucks, ending on failure. But that's okay. The point of this run was never to accomplish every feat or collect everything. It was just to spend a whole real life year on one world and do the things I never do. And sometimes it's okay to fail. So that's it. I spent a little extra time on the world reminiscing about all that has happened. 
I looked at all the builds and major events that had occurred, even learning where I'd placed the tombstones I had lost a while ago. This is where my tombstone. <laughs> I found my tombstones. I also unwittedly discovered that the zoologist sells a crawl to beat kite. And as I looked out at all that I had done, a party was thrown and that was just such beautiful timing. This year has been such a journey. When I started it, I was so afraid I would get bored after only a month and in those first few months there were several times I was reaching a point of boredom when I didn't know what to do and couldn't wait for the week's time to end. But then somewhere probably around July or something, everything changed and I couldn't get enough of it. I have grown to love this world so much and Terraria, my favorite game, I can proudly say has stood the test of time. Lots of people ask me where I get the motivation to keep going on this world or talk about how it takes a lot of patience, but truthfully, I look forward every week to getting to jump onto this world again. My love for Terraria has exponentially grown after this challenge, to the point that I can't see any game ever topping it. So many achievements and adventures, grinding sessions and crazy luck, exploring features, weapons, and accessories, and more that I never knew were in the game. It was all so much fun, and I don't want to let it go. But the thing is, what makes a journey truly special is when it comes to an end. This has been a pleasure, and I'm... <laughs> this is perfect with the, the balloons going up to celebrate the end of the world. It's... It's over. I have to go, and I don't want to hit safe and exit some confetti it's oh man a whole year a whole year of one world <laughs> a whole year thank you all so much for watching for one last time this year one last time have a good one